Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Charles Martin of MasterPractice.com. And today we're going to session four uh, up with our webinar series on surviving and thriving this COVID-19 crisis and then coming out of it, hopefully better than you were. Many won't. But here's a chance to get some more information that you can apply in your practice so you can do better. So before I go further, let's uh, just go ahead into our slide presentation because I know you're going to want to see it. So that's yours truly. And uh, we are uh, have a lot to cover today. So I think you're going to like it. It's been a lot of time putting it together on your behalf. So <clears throat> here's my contact information. That's a phone number you can uh, text to me or call me. And there's my email address, charles at masteryourpractice.com in case you need me. And so let's talk about our agenda. Uh, we're gonna have a pre-presentation orientation. We're gonna talk about the state of COVID-19 right now. This, or it's been called, it's also it's being called uh, SARS-CoV-2, all kinds of names. We're gonna talk about banks, uh, which may be surprising for you. Uh, we're gonna talk about energizing you, what you can do about your contribution to your family, social circles, so, social circles and the public good. We're gonna talk about restart and this, little chance for a do-over that doesn't come along very much, particularly been in practice for a while. <clears throat> We're going to talk about leading and culture <clears throat> and how to make leading so much easier uh, using culture as a tool. We're talking about disinfection tools, speaking of tools. Uh, I think some things you probably haven't seen before. And we're going to talk about your pre-pandemic uh, health as well. Uh, something to remember if your pre-pandemic practice health as a practice wasn't very good, then you have a harder time coming out of it. But it also is the time to do a, a restart, a redo that honestly you just don't get. The chances just are, are few and far between. We're going to talk about marketing, of course, and we're going to talk about some opportunities. And we're going to summarize our entire uh, four webinar session together. Uh, so I think you're going to like it. Uh, it's packed full of good information. So I do have some requests, though. I'd like for you to make some notes as you go along, think in, in terms of wins and ahas. Uh, and you can either put in the chat box, obviously if you're watching this later, not in the chat box. Um, uh, but <clears throat> for your own sake. <clears throat> also, uh, uh, since you're probably gonna be getting this in the membership area, which is a free course at this point, uh, I've gotta give you a gift, which is a gift of how to get one how to get a testimonial and use it. The only request I give to you is that you send me one and I'll teach you what you want to do. Uh, there's going to be a survey for you as well, uh, which is pretty easy. Masterpractice.com ST survive and thrive survey. So ST survey. Uh, so there you have that and let's continue. Well, what's the state of COVID-19 today? Well, we can see that, as of today, and of course this is changing every day, and we haven't hit the height of the number of cases, we haven't flattened the curve by any stretch, um, we can see that uh, a large number of cases who, uh, more, where the patients die have concomitant uh, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, they have obesity, uh, respiratory disease, hard time. What's interesting is, when a person has multiple conditions, the mortality rate increases. So this has been looked at from those who have died. 1% um, had no conditions. 48% had three conditions or more. So the less healthy you are, the more you are at risk. Uh, a very interesting um, uh, view has come across that is uh, not being talked about a lot. Um, and that is that right now, for the first time in ever in history, there's a worldwide singular purpose. This to me is, is a signature moment in that we've never done that before. We've got literally hundreds of thousands or possibly even millions of scientists and people in medicine looking for answers, a uh, way to treat it a vac or a vaccine and working feverishly to get it done. I predict that a vaccine will 
show up much faster than the typical. They'll use, be using AI and computer modeling to help accelerate that along. That's already been done with flu vaccines in the past. By the way, if you're looking for the pre-publication data that shows up in magazines later, as you well know, medrxiv.org or biorxiv.org are good places to go uh, to find it. So the good news is because we've been through it this time, we prepare prepared for the next time. Uh, and I think there will be a next time. Uh, unfortunately, if it's not uh, some version of SARS, it'll be something else. So we just have to prepare ourselves. Um, so <clears throat> an interesting uh, situation and now is occurring. This is a, a Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, who's a, when he calls himself a country doctor, uh, practices in a, in a fairly packed village of about 35,000 people within one square mile in New York. Uh, he never mentioned the city he was in, but he's been treating patients there. And to date, he has tracked, according to him, uh, 700 cases, uh, 699 of which gotten, has gotten, have gotten well using the cocktail you see at the bottom of the screen. Uh, there is a link here to the um, YouTube video that you can see. Uh, it was Dr. Zelenko that made uh, President Trump aware of uh, this combination that's worked so well. He uh, explains in that video that it's actually the zinc sulfate that is the key ingredient because it inhibits the RNA replication inside of the, the cell, inside the cell when the virus gets into it. So, and the hydroxychloroquine, which is an antimalarial drug, which has been around 60 years, uh, basically lets the zinc sulfate enter the cell, which it couldn't do uh, without the hydroxychloroquine creating a channel for it to do so. The zithromycin is for any secondary bacterial infections, which we are finding are occurring. So uh, I think this is a, a, a good news. Uh, also, and they're going to be, you'll see in there, work they're, they're doing with uh, immunoglobulins, globulins, uh, particularly IgG. And how IgM is used, can be used as a marker for someone who is sick but not showing signs of it. Of course, there's all sorts of treatments that are showing up for this disease. Uh, but this one has worked amazingly well. Uh, and for the life of me, I don't understand why, given where we are in its success, that it's being uh, denied. So many patients have gotten better with it. Uh, but that's probably a political issue as much as anything else. Uh, does it need double-blind studies? Yes. Uh, but these are uh, not toxic medications uh, that have been used uh, so this is a case of, of uh, empirically finding something that works. Uh, so uh, that's a video for you to go watch. Uh, it's about an hour long, about 58 minutes, but it's worth it. So let's talk about banks. Earlier, I talked to you about the need to uh, go ahead and get the money that the government is providing for you. Uh, you'd be silly not to. Uh, but you also have to titer exactly when you're going to use it, but you have to use it by before June 30th. So, um, you know, the first thing we talked about with, with making it through was cutting your expenses with like a bush hawk that you just get it done. You, um, you know, look at everything in the sun, moon and stars that you possibly can and cut it. Uh, and actually ask for deferments right now credit card companies and banks, uh, financial institutions of all kinds are being very generous with deferring uh, principal payments and often int uh, interest payments as well. Sometimes all it takes is a phone call. One of the attendees of this uh, webinar series said he called up uh, uh, someone for, for his Audi and they said they didn't have to say much at all. They gave him 90 days deferred interest and deferred pay principal payments. So, Right now, uh, this is the key thing, is to cut your expenses down to virtually nothing as much as you can. Uh, and 
understand that it's, it is wise to take these guaranteed loans, which become grants. Of course, this, the one that everybody's aware of by now is the, the, the payroll protection plan, which basically allows you to pay your staff, your team, and yourself for eight weeks, plus the cost of utilities and rent or mortgage payments. So that's through the SBA and virtually every bank in the country. I won't say every bank, but most banks in the country, particularly the bigger ones, are going to be offering this SBA loan. So what about this, though? How are the bank's going to be doing? Well, my sip of coffee first. I think you have to beware of the bank health because it's likely that these banks are going to lose hundreds of millions of dollars. Hopefully not, but in reality, they very well, they very well, very well may. So one of the things to be aware of is where you keep your money. Something I reviewed before, which is uh, under dire circumstances, a bank can basically requisition your money. If you have a debt with them, they can requisition cash you have in your accounts and give you bank stock in lieu of it. Uh, one of the interesting things that occurred was a video that was been sent out uh, encourage you to keep your cash, keep your money in your bank. Something that was done during the great depression before all those bank failures. I'm not saying it could be bank failures, uh, but there's uh, FDIC only has $109 billion in reserves to protect banks. And we're talking about trillions here. So <clears throat> get your bank rated, look at bank rate or why surfaces or battle financial as a, as a resource for you to determine the health of your bank uh, because you, you need to. That's also one of the reasons, by the way, the fact that a bank could take your uh, cash on hand in accounts, savings accounts and checking accounts and convert it to bank stock, I suggested that you separate your uh, debt and your regular cash accounts into different banks. <clears throat> so this is your chance to reinvent your practice, how you operate inside and outside your practice. Now, today, wherever you can, you need to think in terms of digitizing everything in your practice that you possibly can. Because, it, well, for one thing, as you've discovered, it gives you access from anywhere, which is a great boon for you, uh, whether you realize it or not. I'm, you know, I'm an older doctor, so I resisted this. But looking at it now, I don't think it's, it really is a good time to be considering this and actually put it in place. It is time though to reset your practice on a more profitable course. As we discussed before, the chances are that the dental economy, so to speak, will not rise as quickly, bounce as quickly as the general economy. Even though Maria Bartolomo of Fox Business predicts that in the fourth quarter, there'll be a real boom. Well, I'm for it, believe me, I am, uh, but it's, likely that patients are going to be reticent to come back as quickly uh, after this. They're going to be concerned about infection control. They're going to be concerned about being with other people. So you're going to have to start scheduling differently, uh, uh, possibly putting doors on rooms, uh, doing disinfection of air surfaces, all sorts of things. Uh, and consequent of that is you're going to have your ever overhead go up at least by one percentage point. So you just have to be aware that these are things that are, that you're facing. You have to go on. So my request of you, my uh, desire for you is that you decide to have dental practice management excellence as much as clinical excellence, because when you master your practice as a business, you also, will notice that your clinical care improves as strange as it may sound it isn't always true but for me and many others who've done this they found that clinical care improves because there's not the same pressures on you the same stresses on you you have a routine you have a schedule you know what you're going you have a more predictable practice which is what i hope people do is to have that predictable practice um so <clears throat> So I'd like for you to now go to what I call the mental rooftop bar. I want you to see the COVID-19 landscape from above it, but not too high. 
not a 30,000 foot view. I want you to see it high enough that you can see it and need to track the trends. You know, a good tool for tracking the trends is obviously uh, review, review the news, not live in the news, but review the news. Uh, Wall Street Journal is a good place. USA Today is a good place. Um, and for the USA Today, uh, you know, can scan headlines even by your state, as well as uh, Wall Street Journal is going down that left column that kind of encapsulates the news uh, right on the front page. Also, Google Trends is a good place to go. Uh, there's many places you go, but one of the things that we, as we talked about last time, was the important importance with, of SWAT with a T, an extra T. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and trends. And trends is the part that can really uh, sack you. It can really give you a hard time if you're not watching what's going on. Uh, but we do know the trend uh, and what's on, we have to, what are on patients' minds? As I encouraged you last time and from the beginning, you should be getting on the phone, calling patients, particularly their best ones, and talking to them, reassuring them, being a positive person that encourages through this shelter in place time that so many of us have. Uh, in Virginia, we have until June 10th to be sheltered in place. Not a fun zone, uh, but still, uh, I think it is the right thing uh, because it appears to be working. And of course, I'm being socially distant from you right now. So uh, think of that. I, I think you should find yourself uh, a mastermind group of some sort because talking it out with a group accelerates and improves your thinking and actions. Yes, I'm biased. I've run mastermind groups for well over 15 years uh, and for dentists and entrepreneurs. But when you think alone, you don't get enough viewpoints. And one of the ways to get smart about stuff is to have lots of different connections and viewpoints. So I think having a, a mastermind group will accelerate your progress. Uh, and plus it gives you a lot of support you wouldn't get otherwise because you need the ideas. You need some people to challenge your thinking and sometimes give you wacky thinking that gives you a breakthrough. So I encourage you to find or join uh, a mastermind group. If you have an interest in one with me, let me know. So it's also the time to make new traditions and habits for yourself, your mindset. As I said, avoid being over -newsed. Do find the positive and there's a lot of it. Surround yourself with positive people. One of the things I've noticed is that my wife and I will go out and, and even with the grandkids, we'll take a walk. And there'll be lots of people out walking. They have their dogs and we say, hello, we don't get close. But these people you don't normally see. And so I suggest that you get your exercise. But it's all time, also time to establish some routines. You should have a work routine. Even though you're not in the office right now, you need a routine for yourself and for running your practice. And this is what I see that doctors drop. They do not have a routine for managing, leading their practice. And it's not that difficult to do, uh, but you do need to make time for it. It's also the time that will help produce more profits for you than you might have imagined. It's also time to get, catch up on your sleep. Establish a new sleep routine if you need such, uh, because it will help you do the right thing, operate better. So for yourself, exercise. I don't care if it's stretching, it's yoga, riding a bike, it's running, walking, but you know, put exercise into this new schedule. What I call Da Vinci time. Now Da Vinci time is the first 20 to 30 minutes of the day where you're journaling, you're meditating, uh, you're reading something that stimulates the mind, it's good for the soul, you're praying, whatever it might be that you do that gets you ready for your day. I also suggest that you have some learning time during this time that you might not have gotten anyway. Find three books that you have been wanting to manage to read and not done. Do some online training. This is one of them, but do some online training uh, to sharpen your ax, if you will, intellectually. Diet. You know, uh, 
I went on a keto diet. I lost 40 pounds. Uh, and so whatever diet that you need, if you need a diet, uh, you might want to check that out uh, because that, that's been a very workable one for me. It's also time to engage in the five C's. And coffee is not one of them. It is helpful to have some, though. Uh, so it is time for catch up. <clears throat> yeah, clean out the closets, clean up your files, clean up your desk, clean up whatever and ever, anything. Uh, it's also time to complete. Now, let me emphasize something about completing. Most people have dozens and dozens of things that are incomplete, something they haven't quite finished. And so mentally, for everything that you have left incomplete, your mind takes a little bit of attention and puts it over there on that thing that's incomplete. And until you do get it complete, it doesn't, it, it, it inhibits your ability to be creative. Look, I'll give you an example. Have you ever been towards the end of a book and it's late, but there's like a last 10 pages and you've been reading and reading and you're like, <gasps> There is a need to complete, and that completing a book is one of them. So understand that it energizes you and frees up your creativity to get those completions. And it does the same when you get your catch-up as done as well. So um, uh, understand that uh, this is part of the uh, uh, magic of uh, making all this work. So I put here to communicate, uh, like 10 X, obviously you're probably not going to communicate 10 X, but maybe you need to <clears throat> communicate more with your family, do more FaceTime, do more phone calls, do more, uh, checking out of what's going on. Um, Call up some friends you haven't talked to in a while. You should be uh, talking to your team at least twice so we can bring them up to date. At this point, it's not time to, to cocoon. It's time to talk more. <clears throat> and also, I'll mention here, patience. You want to call them, email them, and you want to engage with them. You could even do video calls with them, of course, uh, using something like Zoom or using something like FaceTime. Uh, and, but you're doing it to <clears throat> cement your relationship with them. One, two, find out how they're doing three, see how you can help and four, find out what's on their mind and five, something we talked about before. If you can do them a favor from afar, a five minute favor, doesn't take much time and effort on your part, but it helps them a lot. It's a great thing to do. So at this point, it's the five-minute favor from afar. But anyway, communicate good news with those groups, with your family, with friends, and your team about what is happening. Uh, another thing that's just a good idea is if you have something you can contribute in your social circle to friends or family or the public good, it's a good time for you to do that. So <clears throat> cash, we talk preserving it you know, cut those expenses like a bush hog and then invest it where it gives you leverage. And I say invest it right now. It's more like we're holding it close because we should, but in the next 30 to 45 days, uh, opportunities will probably show themselves, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Also, you know, this has been a, this COVID-19 shutdown has caused a uh, time that, a forced time to reflect on just ordinary life. And one of the greatest ways to be happy is to find things to celebrate in ordinary life. So I hope that you find those special moments. I've got grandkids with me right now and uh, they're little, uh, they wander around, they get up really early. Uh, they take their naps and then they run around my courtyard in the backyard, uh, having a great time, but it does put a smile on my face to just watch them. Uh, find what you can celebrate uh, because it's a lot more fun. So a concept 
uh, that something that you need to realize that is that people need to hear stories about it's going to be okay. Uh, too many people get over news, as I mentioned, and so they're always hepped up in a bad way. But when you can have a share of voice to create a share of mind, you get a share of market. By the way, this share of voice, share of mind, share of market is a concept produced by the broadcast advertising industry for TV and radio. The more your voice is heard, the bigger share of mind you get and the bigger share of market you get. Well, <clears throat> right now, advertising is down, uh, not only uh, in broadcast, not less so in broadcast, but particularly in digital channels. Uh, Google ads and Facebook ads are on sale for sure. Uh, but they need to hear stories from you and understand this. People end up doing business with those they heard during that time of the recession or crisis. We're really in a crisis right now. Our recession is coming. Uh, we aren't going to pop out of this thing uh, that fast. And so is it time for you to go full scale ahead on doing marketing and ads and this sort of thing? No. First of all, you probably know one's in your office, to even take a call. Uh, but once uh, it does happen, once we get past the crisis part, do market through this recession because it will pay big dividends. So just be present with positive messaging and remember what you can do now or, or in the recession itself is to tell stories about they're going to be okay and to market to their minds, what's on their mind. We know one of the things that's going to be on their mind is safety, not being too close to other patients, disinfection in the office and being safe uh, from getting something in your office. So this is just something that has to be uh, part and parcel of how you're thinking. Also, it's time for you to consider uh, how am I going to become a better leader? Uh, I haven't ever heard a dentist say, no, I don't want to be this good a leader. <laughs> uh, so one of the keys and one of the tricks, if you will, is to give direction as the leader of your practice from the heart, soul, and goal, which really comprise your culture. Because leading then is easier, it's faster, it's better. You use your culture, your values, your purpose, your goals to, to fire people, to hire people, and inspire people. Having a great culture is one of the keys to being a better leader. <clears throat> This is something that you may already realize, but Peter Drucker said that culture eats strategy for lunch. So it is that important. So 94% of executives and 88% of employees think a distinct uh, workplace culture is important according to the consulting form of Deloitte. That's a pretty high percentage. And here's a little another trick of the trade. Your culture can be a magnet for patients, and team members. Why? Because in differentiating different practices, your culture is a big differentiator, particularly if you document it and talk about it. Most of you have heard of the company, the online shoe company called Zappos. And they really are a company based on customer service, which was created out of their culture. So something for you to consider is, how defined is your culture? Because here's the, thing, here's the deal. <laughs> if your culture is a mishmash and it's not clarified, you're going to get like these guys rowing this skull. Um, you know, not coordinated. And even though you're rowing harder, you might be heading the wrong direction. Uh, Kenichi Ome was a Japanese strategist, by the way, just as an aside. Uh, what you want is this. You'll make the biggest progress. It'll be easier, far more comfortable. So what do you start with? What's your practice purpose? Not your mission statement, because most mission statements can go from one office to another and doesn't seem to matter because they sound so much alike. 
you know, part of your practice, your pr practice purpose needs to be about um, why you do what you do. And this needs to be shared. By the way, this can by itself be inspiring to team members and should be. What's your soul? One of the things that you believe and hold true and near and dear. So not only just what you're for, but what you're against. Don't, don't have too many of these. I know early on I made a mistake. I had 43 different ones. Oh boy. You want something that's simple enough that your team can memorize it and recite it. And then you manage off the, your team off of those values. If it matches the value, it's in. If it doesn't match, it's out. You kind of do this anyway, whether you realize it or not. But by defining these values, your life gets easier. And by the way, it gets easy for your team too, because this is who we are. This is what we do. This is why we do it. So the top of a mountain goal, you know, one of the saddest things is to make too small a goal. And when people reach goals uh, that are too small, they, and don't set new ones, they're pretty unhappy people. So set a big goal. One that even you might not even be able to imagine reaching. Right now, it might be difficult to do, I have to admit. Right now, the goal is to get through this crisis. It's one foot in front of the other. It's do one thing, then do the next. Fine, we'll come out of this. But these are uh, quintessential rules, so to speak, of having a culture. Have a big top of the mountain goal that everybody can aspire to, by the way. The chances are you'll achieve it a lot faster than you realized. How far distant? Anywhere from five years on the short side to 25 years on the high side. And a really good one is something you know not going to be accomplished in this lifetime. So I suggest you create a culture guide. This is an example of one. Uh, and these are my particular values. Uh, make a difference. Do whatever it takes. Give guidance because people need it particularly like time like now to make choices and go the right direction performance. It is in, it required as a business that the individuals in your business perform at a high level and also as team members. It's not just one, it's both. Also do it with the spirit of play. Have a good time doing it. Laughter is a good thing that each member of the team has a mentality of ownership. And when your culture is really good, your patients will take an ownership mentality as well. Want to see that in action? Just look at someone who's a, who owns Apple products. Many times they're pretty fierce about it. And the last one, maybe most important, is make mama proud. This kind of sweeps all those things like integrity and loyalty and truth, justice, and liberty for all uh, up into one thing. Would, would this action that you make mama proud? So those are the ones that I have uh, honed after many years in practice. And maybe I hope it'll be an inspiration for you as for you put yours together. Again, if you need help, let us know. So just a few things here about being a better leader. Measure what's important. You know, there are lagging indicators and leading indicators of performance. These are called metrics. What are these indicators? What's a lagging indicator? Well, like an indicator was how many patients you had last month or what your collections were or what your production was. Those are all lagging indicators because it's a recording of what happened. What you really want to look at are the leading indicators that lead to those results because you're moving upstream of that uh, situation. So, so it's, if a number's good, what activities did we do to help produce it? If it's not good, what did we not do? Okay. So uh, upstreaming is, is generally a way to solve problems. So think in terms of where do I need to go upstream to look at this? But you can also measure morale, uh, both for your team and with your customer service. That's called the net promoter score, NPS score, which is a one question survey question, which you can use in your office every day with your patients. Uh, and certainly monthly or quarterly with your team. Uh, let us know if you want more about that. Uh, of course, metrics help you inspect what's going on. Okay, we had 
40 phone calls and uh, 27 became new patients. What happened to the other 13? How did those 27 that became patients go? So that would be data for inspection. Well, let's take that same example and make it data for learning. One, and this is a little, little star for you. You may not have heard this before, but data for learning or metrics for learning are metrics that your team can look at and go, oh, I see that. And so they can self-correct. One of the best things you can do for your team is to give them an examples of good, examples of bad. Let them see the difference. And then they can start correcting themselves using that exampling to have a greater understanding. This is good. Okay, I want to do that. This is bad. Why is it bad? So a phone call is a beautiful example. Many uh, of your team members may be oblivious to what makes a good phone call. Give them ex good examples of good so they can mirror that. So if you have a call uh, tracking mechanism uh, where you record the calls, and I suggest you do, it's not that expensive because it's that important. They can listen into that themselves once they see the examples and self-correct. This, make this makes your life a lot easier uh, and it helps them be uh, more on the ball, learn, and there's a certain pride in improving oneself as well. So as a leader, your job is have a willingness to use force, but only if necessary, and it's not necessary very often. You want to engage their willingness to be a team member with you. Pretend they are volunteers. How would you inspire them work with them, train them, and guide them if they were volunteers. They're mostly going to use persuasion and reason over force. Uh, by the way, uh, one of the uh, great values of a culture guide is someone's not living the values. They probably don't belong in your practice. And it's something you can use as a tool, if you will, when you are interviewing uh, prospective new employees. Uh, that can be immensely useful if they make agreement to that and then they don't live it. Well, they'll, they're going to self-correct or the team will correct them or you'll have to remove them. Uh, but as a leader, uh, use stories to emotionally connect. Stories get through when nothing else will. Uh, if you're trying to make a point, attach a story to it. Um, you know, some people who will go like this, like they didn't hear you. You tell them a, a interesting story. It gets their attention. Uh, there's all kinds of trained on stories. I got something called the two minute story, uh, which I think can be useful for you. Uh, let's talk about switching topics. Now we'll talk about some disinfection tools you may not know about. Like for example, this paint, uh, you may not have known about this, uh, uh microbicidal paint called Paint Shield from Sherwin-Williams, uh, but it's available now. So you may want to be checking this out. Uh, just go to Sherwin-Williams and online and check it out. See if that's appropriate for you. Uh, here's a list of disinfectants against SARS-CoV-2 uh, that uh, is just from the EPA. There's the link up there, but this is, is downloadable as a PDF. Uh, and if you match the EPA number uh, with the disease or what it kills, you can find multiple products, by the way. So just this is a place to go to find them. It's another resource. Uh, interestingly enough, is UVC uh, light. And that is light in the uh, 200 to 300 nanometer wavelength uh, spectrum typically 254, although 265 is being felt as a better number for disinfection. But UVC uh, type light has been used for a very long time in a number of industries to kill all sorts of bugs. It is virucidal. What you see here is a bus, and this bus is in China. So what they're doing is they are uh, disinfecting the entire bus by driving it into a room with these uh, UVC 
lights and depending on the power, how long it takes for that to occur. They're also wiping down inside. I thought it was an interesting uh, methodology to get disinfection. Here's one for just shoe sanitizing mites, Sanistride. So look at that one up as well. Uh, and they have all sorts of mats that are, that when people walk in, uh, <clears throat> probably a bigger problem than we realize. So as I mentioned, this is a restart opportunity. <clears throat> but the first question is, how was your practice pre-pandemic? Was it in great shape, poor shape, too few new patients? None of people saying yes. Was it frustrating? We were overwhelmed with it at times. Was it too little profit for the work you were done or virtually none? And were team troubles driving you crazy? Were you having trouble getting ones or keeping them or keeping them happy? Well, if you were, you need to look at something else. And that something else is what I call these seven spheres. Many years ago, when I became a coach, like 20, uh, I concentrated on getting new patients and getting new patients to say yes, because that would appear to be what every dentist needed. Well, what I discovered was, is that it's not just getting new patients and getting them to say yes, but keeping them, doing it profitably and manage your money, leading them, managing people, and then having a, an efficient, effective operation and an organized approach to practice. So here's the thing. If you make one of these stand out, but don't support it with the rest of these fears, it will fall back down. Uh, the one place, by the way, that gives you the best bang for your buck as far as speed of improvement of productivity is getting more patients to say yes. Um, this is uh, something that I encourage you to work on, get help with if you need it. But these seven spheres are important for your thinking about how to operate your practice so it can be successful. So right now you can virtually wipe the slate clean. I suggest to you, yes, even this time that seems difficult, is to imagine the practice you once dreamed of having. I want you to literally, literally see it in your mind's eye. I want you to feel how would it feel to you. Hear the sounds that would occur. Describe it in as many different dimensions as possible because now you have a chance to create it. <clears throat> and please do, as I mentioned to you before, if you have that mediocre team member that you go, wow, not sure I should have hired them in the first place, let them go. Those will be the people should be let go and stay gone because this is a time where you can get more A players than you thought you might have. Um, and let's switch to leadership here. What area of leadership do you feel most accomplished? What areas of leadership do you need help? And do you get on going training to become a better leader? Virtually everyone needs to and should. That's why there's executive coaches all across the Fortune 2000 companies. So talk about your team, which we just mentioned. You have someone on your team you wish you didn't. <laughs> or you have a hard time recruiting and keeping good team members. Understand this. The average small business, that average practice, has an unfortunate ratio of productivity per team member. So you should be thinking in terms of at least 20,000, maybe even 25,000, and I've seen much more, productivity per team member. So let's give an example, just to make it easy. So let's say you have four team members and you produce $100,000 a month, that'd be $25,000 per team member. If you had 10 team members and doing $250,000 a month, that'd be $25,000 team member. Where you really get in trouble is when you have 10, 10 team members produce $100,000 a month. Now you're at $10,000 a month ratio of people to your productivity. And I'm counting revenue here, not just production. It has to be against revenue. So by the way, just to let you know, Apple Computer, uh, who is vacillated between the most valuable company in the world and not, uh, does somewhere around $35,000 profit per month per employee. Uh, <clears throat> small businesses typically have a hard time with this. It's because they aren't managing their teams as well. They're not being, uh, they don't train them as much. So this is the ratio you need to think in terms of. 
to help keep your practice profitable because your biggest expense is going to be your team members. So this is something to, when you, when you go back at a team member at a time uh, to match how busy you are. So for new patients, do you have a consistent, predictable system to acquire new patients? Have you tried and failed to improve your marketing and in, in both the results and its cost? Do you understand the principles you should use to market and promote for your practice? It's a little bit different. It's certainly not the same thing as general business, uh, but there are many opportunities you have that they don't have. So more questions. Do your patients mostly say yes to your best care. Are you afraid to fully diagnose a case for fear of rejection? I remember a doctor saying, shoot, why would I want to get better as a clin clinician? I can't get patients except what I'm be able to do now. A sad state, really. Because I think if patients need it, we have it on board, it's our duty to help them get it. And anything less is unprofessional. So do you understand how to use human nature to get more yeses? This, this is one thing that's immutable is human nature. That's not changing. All other things will change, but that's not gonna change. So do you get all the referrals you want from your established patients? Do you get all the five-star reviews you'd like? Are you losing more patients per month than you're adding? You know, established patients kind of get, well, neglected. And it's something that shouldn't be neglected. We'll talk about that. So as far as money is concerned, making all the profit you should, are you afraid to charge what you're worth? Where's your overhead through the roof? I mean, one estimate, uh, I heard uh, uh, Dr. Abernathy say that he, his, he's experienced in 90, 90, 90 to 95 percent of dentists that he's working with, it was Michael Abernathy, by the way, uh, are having overheads where they're 20 to 30 percent. Well, that's not really, there's no profit there. And for a business to be viable, it needs to have at least a 10% profit on top of the salary that you take. Uh, this means you have to operate your practice a lot differently. It needs more attention, but it's probably the fastest way to be make more profit is to spend more time and energy on operating the practice, not just becoming just a better clinician. Being a better clinician is always a good idea, but not to the detriment of able actually operating your practice. So you have the life and lifestyle you'd like. Does your practice wear you out, frustrate you, and feel like overwhelming? It shouldn't. Yeah, you get busy, but it shouldn't do this. Does your run on, do you run on time and predictably? And is your organization and customer service delivered so the patients sing your praises? If they're not, it needs to be looked at. So I want to give you a marketing concept here. It's very important. And that's this. There's upstream. There is the dam. We like to call the dam dam and there's downstream. So let's start first with the dam. What's the dam? This is the place where prospective patients are looking for a new dentist. So what are they going to do? They're going to start asking their friends <clears throat> or they're going to go online or they're going to look, they're going to start. Who can you refer me to this sort of thing? But it's also area of pay-per-click marketing, whether it's Facebook or some, or, uh, Google, it's, the, it's, it's a bloody mess because it's quite expensive. Uh, it's expensive to market around the dam at the time that patients are looking. Let's look downstream for a moment. In downstream, patients have already selected you. But the, once there's, they, you're selected, they get neglected because they don't receive enough communication. And understand that giving them consistent, predictable communication while they're your patient increases their awareness of you, their satisfaction with you, and generates more referrals. So this is the big missing piece of downstream marketing to those who've already chosen you. Some other benefits of downstream marketing, they come back, they're more loyal, they keep the hygiene schedules, they refer others. They accept more cases. So downstream marketing has a place that gets ignored, neglected. Don't do that. What about upstream? Upstream is the place where 
It's before patients are looking. It's in the public mind. It's uncrowded. And here's the key. It preempts competition. This is what major brands do. They go upstream to market before a person's looking. How, when do they look? When they're ready. If it's a major case, they may have been looking for years, putting it off, fearful of going and still knowing that they got to do it. So if you're in the upstream, most other dentists won't be, and you can win. How you're upstream is something else which we're going to talk about uh, because I do not suggest the way my bigger companies do it. But let's get some marketing ideas here first. You can communicate into your existing or prospective patients coming out of this COVID-19 crisis and recession. You could give them a pay whichever you think the service is worth for, you know, regular hygiene visit, exam and um, profi or whatever you're doing. So anytime it's slow, you could use this pay what you think it's worth. But what happened is patients will like the fact that you offered it. One. Number two is most will pay the fee that you normally quote. Three, some won't. And those who won't usually won't for a reason because most people are pretty good people, you know, and there'll be some that will pay you more than you might've charged. So just keep that in mind. That's marketing idea number one. My number two is this, you could do an invoice message. Most of our patients come from referrals and we really appreciate any referrals you could make. Well, you could put that on an invoice. Where else could you put it? Once you think about that a little bit, you can put it at the bottom of a letter, a PS, in an email, on the back of a business card. But there's probably other places you could place that as well. Here's marketing idea number three, humor. When you're reactivating patients, they know they're supposed to come back in. So we're about to put your face in a milk carton, alluding to the fact that small children who's gone missing have their faces put on milk cartons so people could find them. Uh, obviously you're not putting your fa their face on a milk carton. They realize it's a joke, but sometimes that humor will be a positive stimulus to them call you or, and you can develop your own phrases like this. I suggest you do. Even my goldfish is asking where you are. So remember here, uh, a little humor is a good thing. Let's talk about opportunities. And there are lots of them. Uh, there are lots of opportunities that can be yours, uh, during this time. Uh, so you have to have an opportunity mindset. What's the mindset of the public? You need to market to the mindset of the public. In, we know that the technology of infection control uh, and disinfection, if you advance that and promote that as a marketing tool, you'll be ahead. There's also a content marketing opportunity where the information you provide in video and audio and text is all over the internet. You should market to your existing patients because remember that's downstream and helps build your referral system much bigger and frankly better. So opportunity, use online video. Online meetings with dental labs with vendors doing team meetings and updates, doing training sessions with the team, even new patient contacts. You can have before the patient sees you, they can say after, after a new patient visit, uh, you can send them uh, not only just a Zoom, you can send them a video email. Uh, you can even do it for treatment presentation in certain circumstances. Not my favorite, I like to have people in front of me because it's easier and you get more yeses, but still that's another opportunity. Another opportunity is to begin marketing immunity and longevity building. You know, this should be the reason that you tell patient they should have all the dental care done. So you need to explain how, and this is not the purpose of this, so I'm not going to go into this right now, uh, how the bacteria that cause caries also affect the rest of the body, how the bacteria that cause periodontal problems affect the patients uh, related to their heart, uh, atherosclerosis, diabetes. We can, it's a long list. Alzheimer's, why, why and how studies show that Replacing missing teeth improves longevity by uh, an estimated six years. Pretty interesting, huh? Why dental implants should be used to replace those missing teeth as well. And how orthodontics improves the whole stomatonathic system as far as chewing, reducing stress, and improving life. 
these are all longevity building. These are all about immunity. Uh, and it's something that you should be marketing to your patients. So, and others, nutraceuticals and supplements, lifestyle training, stress reduction, things you may not have thought about that you could do, even weight control. Because we know that obesity and heart conditions uh, decrease longevity. They're also implicated right now in this, in this uh, SARS-CoV-2 situation. What about relationship enhancement? Ooh. because we know that people have, or in relationships, have friends, it increases their longevity and decreases their stress. Now, for all of these things, you're gonna need reports to explain them why to, for patients, or even a book. Let's look at infection control. I think that promotion of how you, uh, particularly if you get ahead of the pack, uh, disinfect your rooms, how you treat surfaces as instruments, the patient protection protocols, the air, how patients are scheduled, how distancing is used. But again, you'll need a report as far as coming out of this that you can provide for patients and you can actually market this. I suggest that you do. <clears throat> we'll switch gears a little bit, but not a lot as far as an opportunity. And that opportunity is content marketing. What is content marketing? It is providing information that is needed and wanted by your potential patients or existing ones. But doctor, you haven't got time to go through all the possible channels to produce this. My suggestion is you either do a short video or short audio, have it transcribed, then placed across multiple social media channels. You don't do it, but this is the idea. So you take your video, let's take video for example, and you put it on your blog. First of all, you should know that search engines love video. So uh, you tag it with the right descriptions and headlines. Good, you're on your blog. Now you have it transcribed. And that can be put over many different social media channels. So patient, doctors say, well, what do I say? I don't know what to say. Well, just answer patient questions. What are the common questions you get? Answer those questions in one to two minute blocks. And if you're waxing eloquent sometime, it might be 12 minutes, but the one to two minute block is the sweet spot. But content marketing is upstream of choosing. It's upstream of when they're looking. So as soon as you get in the upstream there, patients will be aware of you. You answered their question and they're more likely to uh, select you as their dentist. One uh, uh, little trick of the trade, uh, given to by one of our mastermind members uh, was to put a little, almost like a banner inside your website, uh, offering a free 15 minute video consultation with the doctor. And they go from, they click a link and they go over to a calendar system like Calendly or something like that. And they schedule a time that you've set up pre-scheduled uh, a time and counting will let you know that you have an appointment as well. So you can uh, be face to face with patients and answer their questions. So content marketing is a real opportunity because most doctors aren't going to do it. it. Helps patients find you. And then if they visited your website, you can now retarget them on Facebook and Google with uh, ads that are, much more inexpensive to place than if they were completely cold. Understand that you are, that when you're seen everywhere, you're ubiquitous and you have expert status, you become a patient magnet. So this is a big opportunity. Uh, opportunity also exists with email. And here's three different email systems you can use. Uh, Active campaigns are a good one. MailChimp, Constant Contact, there's lots of them out there. Uh, but these are not expensive. And one of the th things that doctors have said to me about not emailing is they're concerned about HIPAA, but when you're not talking about a patient condition, you can use anything. So I encourage you to open up your email possibilities because most of the practice management systems do not have really great email systems built to them. Uh, be the first to write about infection control and disinfection uh, as the new standard of care. Write a book or write marketing reports. This will help get you ahead as well. So other opportunities. Well, I see other opportunities coming uh, in commercial property. Uh, 
the commercial property market often follows in tandem the stock market. There's going to be landlords who like, I'm tired and you may be able to, to buy property on the cheap. Uh, maybe your office. Uh, is this something you have to have your little antenna out ready to, uh, you know, find the deal when it comes. Uh, you could outreach to other older doctors who are nearing retirement, or you think they are, particularly in a radius of five miles around your practice, and, you know, offer an opportunity to at least talk with them about purchasing a practice. Some doctors are just going to go out of business. Some will sell, some will go to work for a DSO. Uh, it's going to going be all sorts of things that happen here. But as in any financial crisis, the weakest players are getting shaken out and the strong survive. The ones really the strong are those who adapt. So I'm telling you here this because I want you to adapt. The chances are, by the way, there are a lot of going to be equipment on sale that at great prices or great finance that you couldn't have gotten before. I see uh, switching gears related to your team. This is a, awesome time to hire A players. Now, A players know they're A players. What's an A player? It's someone who's a consistent, good performer who you'd love to have as part of your team. They're good performers, they're good team members. Unfortunately, right now, most uh, dental staffs are furloughed or laid off right now. And some of them are going to go, do I want to go back there? where I used to work or not. Most will, frankly, but if you make it a point to recruit them and become a magnet for them, this is a chance that you can hire those A players. You don't have to be in a hurry uh, to hire someone you don't need, but it is a great time to uh, find those new people. It's also the most perfect time for creating the practice that you once dreamed about, the new start, because we're kind of erasing lots of things. Um, and so let's build each segment of your practice, those seven spheres, the way you want them to be, and you're profitable as well. Just as a, a little comment here, uh, uh, Peter Diamandis has created something called Future Loop. Uh, and they have a prediction that the low point on the stock market's not going to be till mid or late May. Uh, who knows what that's going to be. Um, but time, anytime there's a crisis, there's also a time of innovation. A whole number of companies have started during difficult times. Um, Uber started in difficult times. Uh, Tesla started in difficult times. Uh, IBM started in difficult times. There's a whole big list. Uh, if you're curious, just Google it. You'll find for each recession or depression, all the companies that, that got going during that time. So um, let's do a little summary here. The first thing here for you is to handle this crisis and its danger. Cut your expenses to the bare minimum. I mean, everything you can think of, particularly those things are the automatic charges in your credit cards or checking account. Just kill those. Make the hard decisions and working with clients, I, I find so many of them won't make the hard decision, even though it costs them a lot of money every month because they're concerned about people. Well, right now you have to realize this hard decision you don't make that you know you should will end up getting to you, kicking you in the teeth. So it's time to look out for you and your family uh, because you have to. So cut those expenses of the bush hog. Don't you dare use a lot more, particularly snippers. It's time to cut everything down you possibly can. Do apply for loans and grants. And there's something called the $100,000 reality. I was talking to a, a former client who's now a friend. And we talked about, okay, uh, this is like the government is going to provide uh, money for you, which I'm not even sure will even be counted towards income. You have to even have to be taxed on We don't know that yet but it's 2.5 times your 2019 payroll. And as I mentioned, you can use it to pay uh, salaries. You can use it for utilities, rent and mortgages. And also if you're an, an income for you as well, by the way, you have, 
you have essentially have eight weeks of money. You've got to spend it by June 30th. I'm not an accountant or attorney, so consult with those professionals. If you haven't asked for the deferments and delays, definitely do, but it's time to move fast. It's time to be nimble. <clears throat> do decide you operate like your practice, like a business. So you actually come out of this better than when you were pre pandemic. <clears throat> Obviously you need to learn the what and how, of course, join a group, talk it out, get in a mastermind group that can help you use this time to catch up, complete the incompletes and learn. Remember it's not going back to normal. It's never going back. It'll be a new normal, but we don't know what that normal is. So don't expect it just to go back. Use low cost or no cost promotion right now. Communicate with your existing patients. If you need help with content marketing, let me know because that is the place to get upstream and actually move ahead of all your competition. <clears throat> when you're out of the crisis into the dental recession, because the dental recession is going to be here, promote because fewer voices are going to be heard. You have more voice. So you have more share of mind and more share of market. Look for the opportunities that will come because they certainly will. Uh, we know that if you need help, here's my phone number 804-241-0876. My email, Dr. Charles W. Martin at Gmail. That's my private one. So I've enjoyed having you. I hope this series has been beneficial for you. Uh, and I thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Charlie Martin of MasteryPractice.com. Bye for now.